Formula One stays in Europe for this triple header and we make our way to the beautiful Austria GP. Beautiful track has been around for a while and has given us plenty of moments to talk about. One of the moments coming from 2001 when Juan Pablo Montoya made his iconic oh dear moment. Um, we've seen a deer on the circuit. We, we believe it's somewhere on the circuit. So just come in cautiously, please. Oh dear. <laughs> In Canada, we see the groundhogs. In Austria, we see other wildlife. But a deer is not a very common one going around the track. In 2016, we also had another Nico and Lewis moment where Nico kind of forgot to turn. There's always been incidents between the two of them. Austria holds another one of those iconic moments between the two in the Civil War that happened in 2016. In 2019, we had probably one of the best battles we've seen head to head between drivers with Leclerc and Verstappen. It's actually two tracks in a row where we've seen really good fights from both Leclerc and Max. But in 2019, this was one of the most iconic ones going down to the very end of the race with Max actually winning here in Austria, where he made a huge lunge going into turn three. I do think it was fair, but it was very close call and a pretty crazy overtake. This track also holds the memory of Lando Norris's first podium, somehow making up a crazy time on Lewis when Lewis had that five second penalty running Albon into the gravel. Lando was pushing like crazy and got himself into a 4.5 second gap, which gave him the podium. And now we know of Lando as a race winner. If there's an entertaining track in Formula One, it's this one. Any new fans or people that have been around for a long time, Austria is probably one of the most fun tracks to watch on the TV. And I could just imagine how great it would be to be there. The huge elevation changes make this a spectacle to watch. And the track provides amazing overtaking with it being a couple of long straights and not too many corners and being the shortest lap time we have throughout the whole entire calendar year. Lap times are close and qualifying, but then in the race, we see so many overtakes through straight line speed and the DRS gimmick, as people call it, actually works really well in Austria. This holds that iconic five wide moment we had in 2022. And while it wasn't a battle at the front, it was still pretty crazy to see five cars go at it and then not crash and some overtakes actually happen. It's got really wide roads, which helps with the overtaking aspect, but also makes it interesting because you can go on the outside, on the inside, the way that you take the exit is important as well, especially into turn three. That is one of the best overtaking spots, I would say in all of our calendar year. As we go to the track, we're going with the softest compounds from a C3 to the C5. And this track does have some weird traction because it's mainly rear oriented, so it's about a two. The asphalt grip is a three, Tire stress is about a three and braking is a three. You want to have a pretty low downforce car here. Sometimes having a middle range is not too bad because sector two does have some medium speed and slow ish corners. I wouldn't say they're slow speed corners more down that medium range. Sector three then has your high speed corner. So you still need the downforce. You can't go with a super low spec wing, but these cars are floor oriented. So I don't think the wings are going to be that big here. The track has 10 corners and it's also known for a track limit fest. In 2023, there were so many penalties awarded. It was actually crazy that after the race, so many drivers were falling back places due to the amount of track limits given. And most of these track limits were happening in turns nine and 10. So what have they done? They finally did it. They added gravel. Adding gravel into these turns should help drivers not going off and trying to gain an advantage here, which it's not even an advantage anymore. It just ends up becoming a hassle for the FIA and then for people that are watching the race to see the outcome of the race change due to track limits. It's not something anybody really wants to see, especially considering the fight is so close and we're going to have like four teams here that are all going to be competitive for the win. We don't want to see the win decided on a five second penalty that Max got because he went over track limits three times. But if he does go into the gravel, which is now put into these turns, that's his mistake and on him and he'll lose that time. You don't need the five second penalty to reward the driver from the back just because he's driving cleaner. This also does put into perspective the drivers that will take the most amount of risk. I always like when this is a thing. We saw it in Imola, how important it was that you drive correctly. And if you did take the risk, how much it was awarded. Austria is probably going to be a two stop. That is the most likely outcome we had in 2023. Max went for a medium, hard and a medium. 
and we saw our number two runner leclerc also go for a double medium and a hard now if you do look at it more in depth max did actually end up pitting on the 69th lap out of a 71 lap race just so he can take the quickest lap and prove how good of a pit stop team Red Bull is and how great of a driver he was in 2023 this year i expect the strategy to be the same maybe we could see a soft it's possible it's always kind of a alternate strategy that they put out there but the tire stress ends up becoming too big with the high speed corners and medium speed corners in sector two and three but with that being said let's go over a lap in austria so starting off this beautiful track on the start finish line we go into turn one which is one of the most important turns in this track with only 10 turns. This is pretty much your sector one, so if you don't nail this, you will be down on the time, and it's a huge straight, which just requires a great exit. You wanna move the car as much as left possible, we won't see too many overtakes here, but then that leads us into that big straight with a DRS zone in the race. There is technically a turn two, this really isn't even a corner, but as you go down into that straight, you go into turn three, which is the start of sector two, and our biggest overtaking zone. As I stated before, we see some beautiful moves here from the inside and from the outside. Depending on how you set up your car, the exit could be better for the other car. This is a beautiful corner, and it's a very high elevation point, so traction can be very difficult. As you prioritize the exit, you go into the straight after turn three, traction is very difficult, but this will then lead you into turn four, which is another heartbreaking zone. Traction is difficult here as well, as it is a bit downhill. This corner along with turn one is the slowest corner, as this now leads into turn five, which will be full throttle, and teams are now going to turns six and seven, which ends up leading us into our sector three. Turns six and seven are very difficult. The teams that have great downforce will be very good here. If Ferrari has the same problem they had just now in Spain, this could be a very difficult sector for them. Turn seven then turns into turn eight, which is full throttle leading you into the track limit corners. Now these are some beautiful corners to watch live, a beautiful spectacle of seeing the cars go super fast, take those curbs, see the sparks come out from the back, but you wanna try and use as much of the track as you can without getting the track limits, obviously. So you're able to have a good exit into turn 10, which will then lead you into a straight line, that start finish line, also another DRS zone. This track is beautiful and I expect a big fight here between the teams. So let's go over my predictions for the Austria GP. Doing as we always do, the best teams, the worst teams, and my top five drivers for the race. Now the best teams, there's four contenders. That's pretty obvious. RB didn't have the greatest Spain. Aston Martin is behind. They're looking at a beast by car. I talked about it recently and they really need it as of right now. This will be, I think, a better track for Aston, but that's not gonna put them in contention with the top four, which is your Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari, and obviously Red Bull. But going in order with the best team, starting from one to three, the best team coming in here might come as a shock to some of you, but if you kept up with the channel and what people have been saying, McLaren is gonna be the best car in Austria. This circuit layout really suits their car. Lando's been really good in Austria for multiple years now, the McLaren car is the best car when it comes to downforce, tire stress, and what it's able to do around a lap even as well. It's able to warm up its tires but still be super strong in them. It's the best car. Now P2 is a fight and I think it's going to be a fight between Ferrari and Red Bull. I will give Red Bull the edge just by the slightest bit here in P2 and P3 will be Ferrari with Mercedes right behind depending on the drivers. This track is more similar to Canada. I still think they have a bit of a tire deficit to teams like Ferrari, McLaren, and Red Bull. But if there is an upgrade, which I have covered before, that could put them in the top three and honestly contend with even McLaren if the upgrade does what it's supposed to. But that's an if, and I'm going off of what we have in performance right now. As for the worst teams, it's also kind of a jumble between who's gonna be the worst. I do think Sauber performed better in Spain. I think they're gonna be the worst here yet again. And this track is a lot of straight line. It's gonna to be tough for teams like Alpine. Do I think they're gonna be the worst? It's really tough to judge. I think Williams right now is kind of that ninth team. Sometimes they can be better, sometimes they're not. They do have some parts coming here, so hopefully that helps them out. Even Aston sometimes is inching in here, and so is RB. I actually think RB is gonna be that eighth team here. I think it's going to be between Sauber, Williams, and RB that are also going to be at the back again. They have to try and fix this upgrade. The car has struggled in straight line speed. It looked okay in Spain, but let's see how they optimize this package. I'm a bit worried for that team right now. 
But let's go over my top five in Austria. Starting off the list, don't want to blow it, but I don't think Checo's going to get himself in top five anymore in this Red Bull car. It seems like he's a step behind. It's not been a great year for him so far, and I don't think we're going to see him in the top five anytime soon. I think for Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton is actually getting the momentum back, and I'm going to have Lewis in P5. Regardless whether the car is going to be faster or not, I think Lewis can lodge himself in to a P5. Russell's right on his tail too. They're both very close to each other. If it was a different strategy, maybe Russell actually would have been ahead of Lewis. But Lewis had a good race. I think he's going to take that momentum and ride it off here in Austria to get a P5. Now looking at P4 to P1, I do think we're going to see Leclerc come here at P4. He won the race in 22 and 23. He was the closest contender to Verstappen and has performed pretty well throughout his years. He likes Austria. It seems to suit a track like your newer drivers like Lando and George and Leclerc. They've all performed very well here in Austria. Maybe with the experience from F2, it's helped them out. Now for our top three. I think we're going to see a double podium for the McLaren boys. I'm going to have Piastri here in P3. I do not think he can fight for the win with the tire stress being a bit weird here. Piastri is still lacking that tire momentum. He's not able to keep those tires fresh for that long. In the end of the race, he always ends up falling back. We saw that in Canada. We've seen it in Imla. It's a constant issue for Piastri. So for that reason, I can't see him fighting with P1 and P2. I see him more fighting with P4, 5, and 6. But I do think he's going to improve as time comes on. I think Max is going to finish in P2 and Lando will be the race winner here in Austria. With them having the strongest car, I expect McLaren to win here. It would be a shock to me if somehow the car falls back in performance. In a track that should suit them best, at least for their car and their concept, I do think Norris should take the victory here and end up getting his second win in Formula 1. I'd love to hear your thoughts and predictions down below. Please give them to me. I love seeing them. I love replying to them. And thank you so much for the support on the channel. If you haven't, please give it a like and subscribe. It would mean the world. And peace.